Welcome to my presentation. Uh, my name is Almerindo Graziano and I'm the CEO of Silentsec. This presentation is about next generation cyber ranges, from skills development to cyber resilience. About myself, uh, besides obviously working with, uh, with Silentsec, I am also a uh, cybersecurity expert with the ITU, with the United Nations, and um, uh, have been involved in developing cyber exercises and cyber drills for uh, quite a number of years. And uh, I'm also the co-chair for the um, European Cybersecurity Organization uh, sub-working group on um, cyber uh, exercises and uh, uh, cyber ranges, technical exercises and cyber ranges. Um, this presentation is about uh, cyber ranges and the next generation cyber ranges, and uh, they do not represent the, the view of uh, EXO uh, as such, uh, but we do invite you to, uh, to read the, the white paper that uh, as EXO, we have published on understanding cyber ranges uh, from hype to reality, which was published early this year. Um, before we begin, a, a brief introduction about uh, about us. Uh, cyber ranges is a um, uh, is a provider of uh, cyber range technology. Uh, we are actually one of the uh, few uh, company in the world that uh, uh, has developed a full stack uh, cyber range uh, product that is available on premise. Uh, also through our public uh, cloud as a service uh, hosted and even as a uh, as a portable uh, portable cyber range uh, available through uh, three laptops and um, uh, mobile through these um, uh, products we also uh, get involved in uh, a number of services which are based on cyber ranges such as uh, national and regional cyber drills um, cyber exercises for financial institutions and uh, telecom organizations, but also a, a lot of training on uh, red team or blue team or red team versus blue team. We are based in uh, Limassol, uh, Cyprus, uh, in, uh, in Europe. So, what is a cyber range? Uh, first of all, when people think about cyber ranges, they, uh, they usually think about uh, uh, something like this. Uh, large screens, a lot of people busy uh, monitoring and uh, simulating uh, attacks. And um, uh, for, uh, for, um, uh, for quite some time, this has been, and uh, sometimes it still is uh, the case. Um, the, the picture in, um, uh, in this slide to the left is actually the, uh, is taken from the NATO cyber exercise that are run annually, uh, where uh, member states are involved in large-scale cyber exercises, attacks are simulated, and um, this is also a picture of what uh, we would say uh, old generation uh, cyber range. So what is actually a next generation cyber range? If you look at the definition by EXO and uh, by reference, a similar definition is also provided now by the uh, American National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. Uh, a cyber range or next generation cyber range is uh, not just a simulation environment where you can simulate uh, uh, ICT infrastructures or OT um, environments, but it's uh, an ecosystem of uh, simulation environments and also uh, components that allow a cyber range to deliver a number of use cases. The key point or the key part of the definition of a next generation cyber range is contained within the first two lines of this uh, definition. A cyber range is a platform for the development, delivery, and use of interactive simulation environments. So whereas in the past the emphasis was on the simulation environment itself, today uh, cyber ranges are used for a quite a number of use cases and therefore the ability to use such simulation environments for all these use cases is uh, dictated or dependent on the integrated functionalities and components that a cyber range needs to have in order you know, to use, in order to uh, deliver those use cases. Um, if you look at the, uh, the different use cases and the different application of a cyber range, uh, traditionally uh, and initially, a cyber range was used for security testing. So uh, they provided an environment where we could test new products, technologies, and for a long time, and specifically to the uh, confined to the military domain, they were used for carrying out uh, large uh, cyber scale, uh, sorry, large scale cyber exercises. Um, 
And uh, as uh, technologies have uh, evolved in the last few years, uh, we began seeing uh, the need of using the cyber range as, uh, as a concept to do a lot more than what uh, was originally uh, their purpose. And uh, the different use cases go from you know, competence building, uh, security education at universities, uh, development of cyber cap capabilities at national level, uh, development and assessment of cyber resilience, up to then development of national cyber security competition, digital disparity, and even recruitment, so competence assessment uh, and recruitment. Um, if we look at all these uh, applications, there are uh, a number of components that play a role in the delivery of these use cases. And um, the, the D in the table stands for desirable. And uh, as you can see, there are certain uh, capabilities that a cyber range needs in order to deliver many of these use cases. And uh, scoring and reporting is definitely one of them, but uh, a very important one is also the orchestration capability. So if one had to look at what is the, the core, uh, what is at the heart of a... Um, of a, a cyber range or next generation cyber range is definitely uh, orchestration. Uh, and what is orchestration? The picture in the in the slide uh, in, uh, shows you know a man uh, orchestrating a bunch of uh, ICT equipment, uh, network devices, um, and other components. And really, that uh, illustrates very well what orchestration is with regards to cyber ranges. Um, a cyber range at the score has simulation environments, and simulation environment means a lot of virtual machines, network devices, applications, and um, when we are uh, using these simulation environments, there is a need for automatically or semi-automatically uh, initiate and start this simulation environment and to re reinitialize them uh, according to, to the need. So let's say, for example, I want to um, organize at the very simple case uh, uh, a training, a security training, and I need to uh, start a simulation environment or to uh, reinitialize the, initial, the training environment um, very often within the course of the day and uh, to change the environment according to the competencies of the uh, trainee or to be able to um, uh, change the difficulty of that environment. Obviously, um, if uh, I need to be focused on the delivery of the training, I want the capability of the cyber range to, to do that on my behalf, or at least automatically. And uh, orchestration really comes uh, useful when you also have a large number of users and systems involved in, uh, in the use case. Prime example is large-scale cyber exercises or large-scale events where the number of users and the number of simulated system is quite large and uh, I want the ability to manage all these uh, numbers in quite an easy way. Orchestration really comes from the, the cloud technology where it's used at its best to allow uh, users to come in uh, on the public cloud and uh, literally start a virtual machine and configure it without even talking to a human. And those of you who use public technology, public cloud technology, know what orchestration really means when, uh, when it's used. Now let's look at some use cases and let's look at how next generation cyber ranges really help in uh, achieving these uh, use cases. Uh, a very important and trendy, uh, trendy because it's important really, uh, topic is cyber resilience. So cyber resilience is the ability of an organization to withstand uh, an attack uh, and to recover from such attack um, or compromise of systems that in include cyber resources. Now, uh, cyber resilience really touches a number of uh, points or a number of areas within your organization. We have uh, the leadership of the organization, we have the culture, the people, the processes and the infrastructure and uh, literally to, uh, to see that uh, a, um, a, uh, an organization is sub-resilient, uh, to say that an organization is sub-resilient means that uh, all these aspects are addressed in the sub-resilience. Um, how is sub-resilience uh, addressed? Usually 
uh, through cyber drills or cyber exercises. And these are basically um, uh, planned events during which an organization is experiencing a simulated attack or a, a security incident. And um, it simulates the response to such uh, scenarios. Traditionally, there are two ways. Um, the traditional one is uh, uh, tabletop exercises, which are basically uh, simulated uh, uh, event described and um, uh, aimed usually at assessing the, the readiness and the response from a management perspective to identify the gaps in processes. Um, there is no uh, technical uh, simulation at this stage and everything is uh, sort of uh, uh, spoken and presented through slides or maybe through some videos. Then you have the technical uh, cyber drills. These are, uh, uh, on the contrary, focused on operation, focus on the technicalities. Uh, they test the ability of an organization to uh, respond to a security incident from a technical viewpoint. Can they do incident response? Can they do malware analysis? Uh, how quickly can they respond? Um, but then again, they only focus on the operation side. And um, a third hybrid way is through um, cross cyber drill, or what we call C2 drills, which combine the best of both worlds. Basically, on the one hand, we have a tabletop injection, so a simulated scenario. On the other, we have a real attack or a simulated attack where the um, operation team gets their hands dirty in trying to resolve the incident. And by doing so, you can simulate also the interaction between the technical team, the operations team, and the management. And this is very important because this is the ultimate test that allows an organization to, to assess their cyber resilience across all those components that we had identified. And um, that's pretty much a, um, a recommended way of carrying out uh, cyber exercises and testing cyber resilience. Um, this is a typical uh, use of a next generation cyber range for such cyber exercises. You can see that the, uh, the network simulates pretty much a uh, realistic corporate environment. It can be customized to include commercial systems and uh, the actual uh, security controls that the organization uses from day to day um, through orchestration, attack simulation, the, uh, the cyber range can uh, provide realistic scenarios to test, for example, how the organization deals with ransomware attacks, with uh, malware infections, to denial service attacks. And uh, through the tabletop integration, you can then bring in the management and uh, um, the, the media team or uh, the, the, the legal team to understand how the different department or the, the actual security processes function end to end. Another example uh, for this type of cyber drills is uh, um, the one organized uh, annually by the ITU this year. There is uh, a world cyber drill uh, running at the end of October, and um, uh, this, uh, this type of exercise will use um, a next generation cyber range for the simulation of large scale um, environments. Um, and uh, the uh, participation of uh, hundreds of people. Now, um, the difference in using a next generation cyber range compared to another one is that uh, in order to organize such a type of exercises using a traditional cyber range would require large amount of resources, planning and preparation. If you look at the NATO uh, exercises or the uh, large-scale military exercises, they usually take months and a lot of resources to prepare. Using a next-generation cyber range due to the orchestration and the integrated attack simulation and uh, integration of all the other components such as scoring, uh, this um, effort is uh, greatly reduced and you can deliver uh, simulation and uh, realistic scenario in, um, uh, in a, much, uh, a much reduced timeline. Um, another uh, use case uh, for uh, uh, next-generation cyber ranges 
is also uh, skills development and uh, competence assessment recruitment. These are all uh, sort of related because on the training side, we need to sort of uh, cater for the training of a large number of uh, uh, users. Uh, imagine you are a government entity that is tasked with developing the uh, development of uh, security skills uh, in the country or your military organizations or you're even just a large multinational with hundreds of uh, new recruits and new employee every year and you need to manage the entire uh, competence process from beginner to expert um, so this is uh, something which requires uh, scalability requires orchestration and requires the ability to set up simulation environments and training environment and assessment environments quite easily uh, and uh, um, flexibly and uh, uh, at a certain speed. Um, recruitment is uh, related to that because um, uh, we also want the ability to facilitate the recruitment process. Uh, one example that we uh, that we can quote: We run 24/7 uh, SOC, and uh, we run uh, recruitment campaigns every so often. And um, uh, we used to do the traditional follow the traditional approach, where we would get, let's say, 500 applications and have to look at have to look at you know 500 CVs. Uh, that was a very time-consuming activity, and also it was looking at uh, people and uh, prospects from. Uh, uh, at face value. So we were looking at the CV and we had to sort of uh, infer what their competence were based on their CV. Uh, today, we don't do that anymore. Today, we receive 500 applications. We put all the candidates straight through the, the cyber range, uh, skills assessment, and um, based on the results of the skills assessment, we identify those who actually have the skills to perform the jobs for which they are going to be hired. And then only those that pass the skills assessment uh, are uh, looked in detail. So we look at the CV, we invite them for the interview, and then we do the, the job offer. Uh, finally, we have also national cybersecurity competitions. Uh, this is a scenario where you have, again, thousands of uh, uh, people going through the event. You have universities being involved. You have universities that want to participate in the mentoring of the students. They want to uh, create uh, training material, uh, assessment. And uh, today, with a standard cyber range, that is not possible because a standard cyber range will basically be a simulation environment locked in a room, and uh, you, that's where you invite you know, 25, 30 people at a time. But when you have a scale of you know, thousands of people, that doesn't work. And you need to have, uh, again, high level of orchestration. You need to have automated assessment. And um, uh, that you can only achieve through uh, next generation cyber ranges. Finally, and this is the, uh, the curve that really uh, summarizes the situation with the cyber range technology today. Like any innovation that uh, we experience, this is the, the typical innovation curve characterized by early adopters, uh, um, late, uh, uh, late adopters. And uh, today we can uh, easily say that uh, there is, uh, or we are going towards the peak of inflated expectations. And um, the, uh, the reason why we are going uh, through this peak of inflated expectation is because a lot of cyber range products were developed before what the, uh, the, uh, the technology trigger that brought us the next generation cyber ranges. Next generation cyber ranges have developed based on two key technology triggers. One is cloud technology and the other one is attack simulation. And uh, many of uh, you have heard of um, uh, attack simulation uh, technologies and products. The ability to integrate such simulation within cyber ranges has uh, uh, amplified and increased the use cases of cyber ranges. However, not all cyber range products and technologies do that, and many of them require sort of uh, external integration uh, with other uh, attack simulation uh, tools. And um, with, uh, with this graph and uh, with, the, with the comments of this graph, I, uh, I complete my presentation and um, uh, we look forward to hearing from you. If you have additional questions, please reach out to us. We'd be very happy to, to answer that. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference.